Welcome to the Nehemiah Entrepreneurship Community Podcast. I'm your host, Patrice Sage. And today we have two of our team members in the studio. We have Wendy Schlock, the regional director for North Wendy America. Clem. Did Wendy I say, Clem. What did I say? You got Deborah and I mixed up. You did Wendy Schlock. <laughs> she, she was my sister from another mother. I'm okay with that. No. I don't know if her mom will want to adopt me, but. <laughs> Wendy, Wendy, thank you for that correction, Wendy. Wendy, that, that rolled off. That rolled off real nice. <laughs> it's a job practice. <laughs> and then we have with uh, Richard Zolke, our um, our chaplain for the for the Nima project, as well as the home office coach. Well, lady and gentlemen, welcome to the to the podcast. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Well, guys. You're welcome. We're going to have a discussion around the importance of praying for our leaders, and we're going to be specific today, even though we'll deal with praying for our leaders in general around the world, but today we're specifically talking about praying for our leaders here in the United States. We have an election coming up in the U.S. Of course, uh, Wendy, you have a prayer initiative that you started uh, within the U.S. and North America that we want to focus on today, and so I thought it'd be good for us to talk about it, the importance of prayer and, and its role in moving the hearts of leaders and so before we get into it, um, just in case of our audience, if this is the first time watching you on the podcast, uh, so they can know who you are and, and the importance of your role. So let's start with you, Wendy. Wendy, you're, you're the North America director, as well as you also run the U.S. programs. What does that mean? Tell me about Wendy Clem and Wendy's responsibility in my project. Well, Patrice, I, um, I oversee the U.S., Canada, and Haiti. And I'm also here in Central Florida at our uh, e-community center. So my role basically is to serve the entrepreneurs, our trainers, our coaches, our center directors here in those three countries. But you know, Patrice, everything um, we teach in, in our courses uh, are even in our core values as an organization is we start with prayer. And so I really feel strongly about that. Amen. Amen. Well said. And Wendy, you mentioned that you are actually in the Orlando Community Center. You are one of those, uh, even as regional director, you you set up in Orlando Center to serve as a prototype for what you'll be helping directors around the around the U.S. and other parts of the region, i.e. Haiti and, uh, and Canada and even the DRC to do yeah. so. A bit about, about that role. And I mean, that's literally three hats, right? Regional director for North America. <laughs> Director, and then uh, the community director for Orlando. So let's tell us about that role. Well, you know, I, um, I, I love the e-community center. It is one of um, those places that entrepreneurs can come together and not only receive training and coaching and access to capital, but also have a place to go. Uh, you know, my favorite room in the whole building is the prayer room to come in, um, just have that quiet space. But they also get to link arms with other entrepreneurs here. We have, um, this is the first e-community center that has co-working space as well as our executive space. So here, just imagine Patrice as an entrepreneur if you got to go to work every day in a building with other Christian entrepreneurs who shared your same values, so you get to connect with them, you get to, to learn together, you get to grow together, you get to work together in a space that honors God in all that we do. And you know, I've, I've been an entrepreneur before I came on board with Nehemiah Project, and and I've had an office before and it was always a struggle. And I just love being able to, to, to provide that space for entrepreneurs. I'm, I'm looking forward to other centers opening up uh, around the U S but you know, Patrice, it's, it's more than that. We also have, you know, our, our community uh, through our life groups and our connect groups and business development. It's really about, you know, raising up kingdom entrepreneurs that impact the marketplace. We're gonna impact Central Florida Amen. in a big way. Amen, thank you, Wendy. And I actually run, a, I run two life groups here in the Vancouver Center. I do one every Monday actually today um, at around uh, 11 o'clock Pacific time, two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And I do another life group for couples in business once a month. Uh, and so, uh, so yeah. 
So Wendy, thank you for your leadership there and for what you're doing there. Richard, let's go to you. Uh, you've been on the podcast before. And by the way, Wendy will be hosting yeah. the podcast. Wendy is, is, a, is a guest for the podcast. You'll be hosting, I think, either next Thursday or the following Thursday. I right, think so, yeah. yeah. Right before your prayer, the, the, yeah. the prayer, you'll be hosting the podcast. So thank you, Wendy, for the role you play. I had a chance to listen to the podcast that you that you um did with, uh, what's her name, with one of, one of the- Jamika. Jamika, good job there. Thank, thank you so much for that. We Richard. weren't you, Patrice. We we weren't you. Well, we, you we, we just we just chatted. So, <laughs> you a good job. Thank you for that. Richard, you are home office coach, and um, and so tell us a bit about what that means. Just in case folks don't know who that means, what that means. Also, a chaplain, and what role you play, and then you also have a coaching practice as well. Tell us a bit about you. All right. Um, well, as the home office coach for Nehemiah Project, I. Uh, kind of administrate the uh, the coaches that we have and help them uh, be set up uh, to be a, a coach. Um, we have uh, the opportunity uh, uh, moving through our e-community and if you are a Diamond member, uh, you have the privilege of 30 minutes of coaching each month uh, with that Diamond membership. Uh, and so I work with with making sure that the right coach is with uh, the individual and uh, moving uh, forward with that. I also wear a, uh, a hat that helps uh, those entrepreneurs who are looking for um, investment capital and helping them to, to vet through that process as well. And as far as uh, the chaplain role, um, we had a wonderful time in Nehemiah week uh, each morning before we, we started uh, just together for prayer and uh, surround that meeting uh, with that opportunity. It, it, it was a great time um, to be together as a community in prayer. And we'll talk more about that uh, as we go along here this, today. Um, I also lead a life group. And uh, again, that is uh, in the uh, Hillsboro, Oregon area. Um, and we are, of course, uh, right now meeting online. Uh, so we've had, uh, we've actually had some, uh, an international visitor from Ireland uh, join the group at one point in time. And uh, we continue to see that, that group uh, grow and, and have new uh, members uh, join us on a regular basis. Awesome. And Wendy, you also lead a, a life group and a connect meeting as well. But tell us a bit about that as well. You're, Wendy, you're muted. Sorry. Deborah Schlott and I lead the Women in Business Life Group. We meet every Friday morning. Um, and we actually share that on Facebook as well in our Women in Business community uh, group on Facebook. And we also have a monthly connect group that we do that uh, will be starting. Uh, our next one is going to be in October. And that group is designed to provide tools that have practical applications and then partnerships with purpose. So it's a, a networking group that also provides those tools. You know, our, our desire is to equip the entrepreneurs. And, and that's, you know, when we talk about our three keys, our, our foundational one being relationship, that's what this group really star starts on. But we also want to be able to provide some tools for growth as well. Awesome. Hey, if you want more information about any of that, the life group, the connect meetings, uh, these are all very good free resources. Just connect with Wendy or Richard or just visit our website and get more information on that. Well, guys, thank you so much for being here. So today I talked about prayer. So Wendy, uh, no, I'm sorry, Richard, let me start with you. So um, as chaplain, uh, let's talk about prayer and its role in in the christian discourse you know in terms of when we talk about prayer um you know what is why is prayer important because god kind of knows what we need right i mean the bible says he knows what we need before we ask so why pray what's the point of prayer what happened when prayer is not happening kind of first educate us a bit about prayer all right well uh to begin with i have a a friend who uh 
I love the comment that he made about our uh, building our relationship with Jesus. And it, his comment is um, he has come to realize that, that God and Jesus just wants to hang with me. Uh, and it's a sense of just being around God. You catch uh, God's vision at that time. And that is really what prayer is all about, is gaining that understanding of who God is um, and what he is doing in the world around you, in your community and those relationships that you have. So it certainly is an opportunity for us to bring our needs uh, before God. And that is just uh, more in that sense, as you said, uh, Patrice, God already knows what it is that we need, but it is an opportunity for us to um, really humble ourselves to recognize uh, what our needs are and to lay them before uh, God to have him move in a way that, uh, you know, is according to his will and uh, to encourage us and, and help us to, to grow in that relationship. So I see prayer is, is just, it's building that relationship, not only with God, but it also helps the whole community come together. And, and as we, uh, we come together in prayer, we can uh, share those, those prayer items and come in agreement with those and uh, lay them before the, the throne and that, see how, how God responds to that. Mm. I kind of like the point you're making that you say, though God already knows what we need, but prayer, when I pray, I grow in, in relationship with God. So it's almost, it's almost like a spiritual journey for me to pray, which is mm -hmm. part of the, the process of, of me growing in the Lord spiritually. Uh, so it's really more about my personal growth versus on me talk, telling God what I need since he already knows what I need. Right, uh, yeah, exactly. Well, someone may ask, it's okay, well, I can do that through study. I can do that through meditation of the word of God. I can do that through hearing God's word. Why then, why pray? I mean, you know, why is prayer an additional tool that becomes important for that? Yeah, that would, you know, as you, you were stating that, the idea that it came to me, it'd be like uh, you spending time uh, reading uh, about Gina, uh, spending time talking to other people about Gina, uh, but you don't have conversation with her as, as your wife. And so uh, the same is true with prayer. You know, we can, we can read uh, through scripture and see how um, the folks in a, throughout uh, history have prayed. We can get great prayer devotional guides to help us in the process. But unless we enter into that relationship and actually have a conversation with God, uh, we really aren't going to, that relationship isn't going to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's going to be knowledge that we gain, but it's not going to affect our lives. Mm -hmm. and Good. So that's what I see as a whole thing, whole point that, that uh, it needs to have some sort of an outcome, uh, whether it's our growth, it's our challenge to move forward in our relationship, it's our uh, the challenge to go out and serve the community, uh, you know, all those things happen as we we develop that relationship with God through prayer. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, Richard, even though today we're, we're going to be focusing on North America and the initiative that Wendy has coming up, you do lead to prayer times each year with the MR Project. Tell us a bit about that and, and why that's an important overall strategy. Okay, I didn't quite catch the... I said, the even though today the focus is on the prayer initiative that's coming up with North America, you, you do lead there two times a year that we at NIMA Project collectively pray globally and even as a staff. Tell us a bit about that before we get into Wendy and what she's doing with North America. Yes, yeah, so we have uh, two opportunities through the year where we we focus in on prayer. We actually have a 21 day uh, fast and prayer time. Uh, we select um, leaders for that to gather uh, for each day of those 21 days. 
And uh, that group can be representative, uh, you know, either in a, a, a locale or uh, by language, um, as we have, uh, you know, French speakers and Spanish speakers uh, and such, and English speakers, of course. Uh, but uh, one of the great joys that, that uh, I've had, as especially as I mentioned earlier, this uh, the prayer that we did leading up to Nehemiah Week was that opportunity to to gather together internationally and to sit in prayer, even though I didn't know the words that were being spoken in French or in Spanish, I could still enter into that time of prayer and pray along with my brothers and sisters who are praying in their language. And that, that's just a wonderful experience in knowing that, that we are an uh, international community uh, and we all come together uh, in prayer. Awesome. Thank you, Richard. And Richard also uh, administers a prayer and praise forum on the eCommunity platform. If you want to, if you're a member of the eCommunity, you want to engage in that, reach out to Richard or just go and onto that forum and request to be a part of, of that as well. Uh, so, Wendy, you made a decision as director of North America in the U.S. to lead a prayer initiative. So, first of all, tell us why is that important for you? I mean, you already do the twice a year prayer as a global organization. Why do you feel it necessary to have a specific focus on your region around prayer? Well, Patrice, I believe that we need to lead by example, first of all. And, you know, that's something that, um, you know, we do within our organization twice a year. We've committed to this and, and we enter into this because we know it's important, you know, and, and what I felt was really needed is within my region, I wanted us to also have that opportunity to come together um, in a corporate prayer to, it, where it doesn't, um, it was just so, it was, I, I really, you know what, Patrice, I, I don't even know how to describe to you how important it was to me. <laughs> I mean, I really, you know, it just, this is what is needed to be done. And I want to walk the walk, you know, and, and I want to bring all of us together collectively because that's what we start with. We start with our relationship with Christ. And, you know, I've tried doing business without having a deep relationship with Christ. It wasn't fun. It wasn't easy. It, and it didn't turn out well for me. Right. And so I wanted to make sure that we do that within the region, that we provide that opportunity. And I was really excited. You know, we had we started with the um, National Day of Prayer in May. Mm. And, you know, I was I had been kind of praying for what does that second time? I wanted it to at least be twice a year. Um, our goal next year is to maybe increase it to once a quarter. Um, that we begin to come together. But we re I received uh, about the time when I was working to figure out, okay, in the last few months of the year, when are we going to do this? This, this was back in July. I'm like, okay, we're at the last half of the year. I received an email um, from the return talking about the National uh, and Global Day of Prayer and Repentance. And when I saw that, I just knew that was going to be the second day. Because again, it's coming alongside one another. It's standing with one another in prayer. You know, um, the Lord tells us where two or more are gathered. Well, I want to gather the region together and stand together and pray together in alignment. And, you know, there's so much going on right now and people are really struggling with so many different things. It just felt even more important that we do this and walk alongside with them. Yeah, yeah. There's something interesting as you talk about together. You know, Richard talked about the importance of prayer, about a relationship with the Lord. But it seems like you're almost not saying, but suggesting that something about prayer that also enhance or cultivate relationships sure. when we pray together. Could you elaborate on that, about the importance of praying together, not just individual, but coming together in prayer and how that impacts our own relationship with each other? 
Well, for me, Patrice, you know, it, it's again, standing in alignment with one another. It's because when I'm, I don't know about many of you on the, the podcast and those who, who are listening, if you've ever sat down and prayed with someone, there's something that happens that's different when you just pray by yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, when I pray, you know, by myself, I'm talking with God and we're having an intimate conversation. But when I sit down with someone else and pray, it's that two or more are gathered. It's that we are collectively reaching out to you, Lord. We are coming together to worship you, Lord. We are coming together to reach out to you. And, you know, yes, our individual relationship is important. But I just think, you know, sometimes he just wants us all to get together like a family reunion and have have a conversation and enjoy some time with the Lord. Yeah, something powerful. The scripture does say where two or more are gathered there, he's in the midst. If, 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 if two agree on anything, that 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 he'll 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 be able to uh, to make it a pass. So that's important. So so when it sounds like this is not something new, you mentioned uh, you, you partnering with the uh, Global Day of Prayer. So it's, so you're kind of anchoring this around a national prayer activity. So the National Day for a national prayer activity already existing within the United States. Is that correct? Correct. The return has started. This is the first year they've done this. They're actually going to be um, going and marching into Washington and um, praying uh, there as well as doing this virtually because of COVID. And I just felt really led as an organization to stand in alliance with that, Um, you know, to really uh, uh, add our collective voice to that prayer. And so, you know, we are encouraging people to uh, pray. We are going to do a special one hour prayer corporately that Nehemiah uh, alumni and entrepreneurs are going to come together on Friday and Saturday they have various programs and various uh, speakers who will be praying throughout the day on the 26th. So we're encouraging um, people to be a part of that but I felt it was important that the Nehemiah project comes together for that corporate prayer leading into their event. So we'll be praying from five to six and their event starts at six on Friday. So not only are we going to be uh, linking arms with them, but also raising them up in this day of prayer. You know, they're stepping out in a big, a big way um, and in a very large vocal way to say, this is a day of prayer and repentance. Mm. It was more than just let's pray together. Awesome. Talking to Wendy Clem, the regional director of the North America, the U.S., and she also leads the eCommunity Orlando Center, as well as Richard Zilke, uh, our home office coach and chaplain. We're talking about the importance of prayer, praying for our leaders. Uh, Wendy has a prayer initiative coming up that she's going to talk about, inviting you to be a part. If you have questions or comments around prayer, or how you can engage in the prayer initiative, please go ahead and share that. Ask that we'll bring you part of the conversation. I know that you, you're watching and listening to this around the globe. Uh, this could also inspire for you to uh, to do prayer initiative in your own country, in your own city. I know yeah. Kenya, uh, Frank um, Tanga has a, a, a weekly prayer uh, thing that he does as well. So so if you, even you cannot be a part of what Wendy's doing in the United States, it can hopefully inspire you to, be, to engage and connect with prayer initiative in your own country. If you're in Kenya, Frank, our director there, does have a prayer that he does there. You can also connect in with Wendy virtually as well. So Wendy, let's talk about this thing called The Return. Okay, so what is that as an organization and, and, and why now, why this year, and what can we expect? Educate us a little bit, and then we're gonna talk about it and get involved with it. So the return has put together events on uh, Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And what they are doing is they are praying and 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 also um, asking for repentance for what we as individuals, as organization, a, a, cor- a, a corporate type prayer, if you will, coming together and to repent for what 
uh, for our sins, what, what is happening, but also to be praying for our leaders. We know we have elections coming up in a, in, in a very short period of time, but praying for those who are leading our nation, those who are leading our businesses and leading our churches, and to come together to do that. And so they have, uh, even 10 days leading up to that, they have a prayer initiative, and you can go to their website and, and get more involved with that. And I really encourage those to do that. As I said, we will be coming together from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 25th as an organization in prayer and repentance. And they will continue on and, you know, this movement to really bring us back to God. Just bring us back. Awesome. Awesome. Again, if you have more information about the, the return and their initiative, there's our, the, the link is right there. Uh, the return.org is their uh, website. Just go there and get more information about this prayer initiative, the return. So Wendy, uh, but you also suggesting that besides what the return is doing, you, you're organizing in one hour corporate prayer with, the, with Nehemiah folks around. Tell us a bit about that and how people can access, take advantage of that. So we're going to do a, a one hour Zoom call. Uh, you can go to the, our website and to the events page and there is a link there to register so you can get the Zoom link. And so what we're going to do is we're going to lead in some corporate prayer. We've actually divided uh, the U.S. into North, South, East, and West, and we've got some of our team leaders who will start the prayer. Uh, I'll be leading for the South, and, you know, I will start by praying for our leaders. And each one of the team members will be praying for various, uh, to lead the corporate prayer, and then just open it up to pray how you're led. You know, we're going we're gonna to raise our voices up together. And that's what that one hour is about, is just raising our voices together. Awesome. So, Richard, how is this different than what Nehemiah does on a corporate level in terms of why is it important for regions like what Wendy is doing, whether it's North America, Latin America, Asia Pacific, whatever, to, to this is kind of mobilization at a local level? Well, each local level has its own unique uh, situations, uh, you know, especially during this time that we've got, uh, you know, st certain states are under different restrictions with the COVID uh, pandemic. We've got uh, different uh, political um, disruptions, uh, I guess, is. is as good a word as any, happening in different areas of our country. And of course, uh, over this last uh, uh, couple of uh, days, especially the West Coast has been dealing with some tremendous uh, wildfires uh, and such. So um, there are those individual aspects that each region uh, has to, to work with. And, and so it's important for those prayers to be lifted, addressing those issues. And, um, you know, I find it, it interesting that uh, they, uh, the return is, is focusing not only on prayers looking forward and asking God to, to heal a nation, but that comes out of an attitude of repentance and identification. And even though, uh, you as an individual may not have participated in uh, some of the cultural sins that have transpired over uh, decades in our country. Uh, just simply identifying yourself as an American and realizing that uh, these things have been happening and we need to ask God for forgiveness and repent and turn back towards him uh, as a country, if we are expecting um, to have his blessing upon us. Amen. It reminds me of Nehemiah, Nehemiah in the Bible, when, as he was burdened by what was going on in Jerusalem, uh, he prayed and he, mm -hmm. as he prayed, he repented 
for 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 for, for, the, for his fathers and for his people, uh, and so he recognized that. I often say that they didn't get into the problem because they were weaker than the enemy. It's because they had sinned against God, and they're not going to get out of the problem because they're stronger than the enemy. Is when they get into favor with God, and so so prayer is important. It's critical. And so again, I'm talking to uh, Wendy Clem, our director for North America for the region, and um, and uh, Richard Zilke, our uh, uh, home office coach, as well as chaplain. And we talk about the importance of prayer, praying for our leaders. Wendy has a mission coming up where she's partnered up with um, with the return to uh, to pray and repent for America and uh, and for and, and for our leaders, so that God's will may be done. Uh, here in America as it is in heaven. Again, you may not be American or be in America, but it's a good initiative to be inspired by to see how can you do something like this in your own country, in your own city, as you seek the face of God concerning your nation. Um, there's issues going on with COVID-19, the economy, uh, with our political situation in the United States, the, 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 the fires here in the Pacific Northwest and in the West Coast in general does as we had to ask us a question, do we need to pray at this moment? Where's God in all of this? You know, scripture is very clear. When all kind of madness is happening, when God is allowing fires and social disruption and all these things, it, it, something is off somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> something is off somewhere. Because this is yeah. not normal that in the same year, at least in America, we have COVID, social unrest, fires, right? Political dynamic so something is off it does not take uh you don't have to be uh you know even a blind man can see it so it is a time for prayer and so forth so on well i want to continue with them because i want to kind of then talk about you know look at scripture as we talk about the importance of prayer and then we're going to talk about how when what when he's expecting the outcome she's expecting out of this before we do though i want to make some announcements before i do wendy if somebody is watching and listening and say i want to be a part of this of this prayer hour that you have coming up uh, how do they get involved with it so the it's very simple if you go to the nehemiah project uh uh, website and to the events there is the national and global day of prayer you click on that you register it's a free event and we will send you the link for the zoom meeting and then just come and pray with us um you know and and here's the thing to remember you know if if you're struggling right now and you say, you know, Wendy, I, I can't wait till the 25th. I, I, I need I need to pray or I need someone to pray with. You know, that's why we have a chaplain for Nehemiah Project. That's why we have Richard. That's why I'm here. You know, I have a lady in my office and that's what she does. She is our prayer warrior. We have a prayer room here in the Central Florida Center. If that if you can't wait for that, then you need to reach out to us. We have our prayer forum where you can put your prayer requests up. This is how important we believe prayer is for our organization and for our entrepreneurs. So um, go to the ecommunity.com, uh, the events page, and look for the Global Day of Prayer. Join us on that day. But again, Go to our forum on our e-community um, if you're a member and reach out to us if you uh, just need to raise your hand and say, I, I need somebody to pray with us. That's what we're here for. Amen. You know, Richard, unfortunately, um, in most churches in the world, particularly in America, prayer meetings are the least attended meetings, <laughs> you're right? Yeah. If, if you call a meeting on the prophetic, you know, you got a lot of folks showing up. You're going to do a revival on prosperity. You're going to learn how you're going to get out of debt and double your income. Man, you're going to have droves of people coming up. If you've got a, a an, a, an evangelist or teacher with some good messages. For, but if you call a prayer meeting, <laughs> you know, and what folks don't realize is prayer meetings are, the, the speaker is God himself, mm -hmm. right? Prayer yeah. meetings are actually... The agenda is come, you talked about it, come and, and to call the relationship with God. That's the only agenda in prayer meetings. That's right. right. 
But that's not sexy, is it, Wendy? I mean, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it, it you doesn't know. Make me want to come because something in me is saying boring. Or I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Well said. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, because yeah. well you know, I have to. I have to say, Patrice, I, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm I'm just one of God's little girls. And I, I'll say this all the time: um, God did not give me the gift of prophetic speech. He did not. I, I'm not a pastor, and so prayer for me is just a really intimate conversation with the Lord. And mm. and so a lot of people are afraid because. You know, we don't speak so eloquently and all this. I was reading the other day in the Bible and the Lord's like, don't don't come to me with that stuff. You know, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Um, but, you know, I mean, that's Lord, the Lord wants an, a relate, an honest relationship with him. And a lot of people are afraid to pray out loud. I know when I first came to Nehemiah Project, I was like, yeah, I don't pray like Patrice prays. I don't pray like Glenn <laughs> plays. I don't pray like Dean pray. I don't play. I don't pray like none of them. And so a lot of people are afraid of that. And I think that's one of the reasons that they don't come to prayer meetings is because, you know, they're afraid that uh, they don't speak so eloquently. But this is what I have to say about that. If God wanted me to speak eloquent, I'm pretty sure he'd have made me speak eloquently. <laughs> but God doesn't need me to speak eloquently to do what God's called me to do. Because if he did, I'm sure I would speak much more eloquent. So I think that's what we got to remember. Yeah. And it is also about the hearts, right? Sometimes in that eloquence, God God gets lost, right? Because it becomes oh, about yeah. our speech and our word versus the essence of what God's trying to get to. You know, Richard, what are your thoughts here? I mean, you know, people, Wendy says people are afraid because they think somehow they got to come a certain way. What are the other concerns why people don't? We know prayer works intellectually, even spiritually, but why do we struggle to show up a prayer? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that, that especially now, um, our lives are so uh, impacted by technology and we are so busy even during uh, COVID, uh, you know, people uh, might think, well, it's, you know, you're supposed to be staying at home and such. Well, they just fill their time uh, by being online or uh, doing other things that um, to come and to sit before God uh, and even just to be quiet for a while, uh, people are not comfortable with that because they want to fill their time. They feel like uh, something has to, to be happening for it to be a valuable time instead of just sitting and listening. Uh, and I think that as people that I have worked with on helping them grow their, in their relationship with Christ, um, that is probably the single most um, difficult aspect of prayer uh, for people is just to sit and listen. Um, other things that uh, I find, one thing that, that our church does that I, I really appreciate uh, when we do gather for prayer is that we enter into prayer uh, following a time of worship. So we set our hearts uh, according to, to uh, you know, various chosen songs, uh, worship songs that really uh, bring us before the throne and are focused on God and, and what God has done and how he is moving uh, in the lives of, of his people. So uh, I think that is a, another way in which people can can enter into the time of prayer, especially to, um, that uh is often overlooked other than just uh, so we're going to have a prayer meeting and that's uh, that's what it is. Uh, we need to realize that, that, that even prayer is an act of worship. Wow, well said, well said. Again, I'm talking to Wendy Clem, our regional director for the for North America, as well as leading, she also leads the e-community center in Orlando, Florida, and she also runs the U.S. programs for the NEMA Project, as well as Ricky Zilke, who is our home office coach as well as chaplain. We're talking about prayer. And when he has a prayer initiative coming up, she wants to invite you to be a part and join in. 
I will be there personally, Richard will be there, many of us are gonna be there as we come together in prayer um, to for our nation and for our leaders. And as we partner with the return uh, in praying and repenting for our country. Before we continue our discussion, because now I wanna kind of get into some scriptures and just deal with the scripture framework of prayer. And then we're gonna talk about, you know, how do you enhance your prayer life as we prepare to wrap up. Before we do, a couple of events coming up that I wanna talk about. Wendy, I know you have some events coming up uh, within uh, within North America. I'm gonna let you share in a minute, but just in general, hey, if, you, if you're watching this, listen to this, if you are, Go to your our event page. There's going to be a link right there for our event page. Just go there. Our Nima Prize. We have a number of events coming up. Or we have a business success accelerator, a BSA program coming up in the next couple of months or a couple of weeks. We have it going on in the United States. We have it going on in um, in in Kenya as well. Check that out and be a part. There's some identity and destiny classes coming up as well. Uh, so check that out as well. That's on our website, on our event page. We have the B executive courses coming up. Uh, check that out as well, both in, 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 in Kenya and the United States. We also have the, uh, the Urban Impact Certificate Program that's coming up, as well as some free seminars, as well as happening in Kenya as well. There's some certification courses coming up for, um, for trainers, as well as coaches. So if any of that interests you, just go to our website on our event page, just pick which event best suits you, and then join in the park. Wendy, you do have some some activities going on in North America that you want to talk about. So what's coming up, Vic, Wendy, that you want to make sure we, we, we join and be a part of? Well, Patrice, on the 15th from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be giving a seminar on the principles of God's economy. It is one of, um, it's one of the seminars that I think is the most impactful on an entrepreneur is really having a clear understanding of what is God's economy versus the secular. And so that's a seminar coming up on the 15th. And then on the 16th, from 4.30 to 5.30, we have doing business in your God-given sweet spot. Those two seminars, I think, um, if you've not attended them, uh, we would love to have you join us. We also have on the 16th, we start our next identity and destiny class. So excited. We do have a couple of, I think we've got two or three more uh, open seats. So it's not too late to register for that. As well as, as you said, Patrice, you know, we have our uh, first women in business BE certificate class that will be graduating in a couple of weeks. So super excited to see what's happening there. And we have uh, a couple of days later, we have another graduation. So we are, you know, in the midst of all of the craziness, we have entrepreneurs who stepped out in faith and who said, I'm going to do business God's way and I'm going to get back to the foundational stuff and really seeing an impact in their business. So lots of things happening. That is awesome. Wendy, you've had a number of, I mean, just you've had more graduation this year. <laughs> are, you, are you graduation out? I mean, how does it feel, by the way, to have so many graduations this year? You know, Patrice, I cannot wait till we have a graduation every week. That <laughs> is what, because you know what that means? That means now we're really beginning to impact the marketplace and mm -hmm. raising up Biblical entrepreneurs. I am excited about that. You know, and the other thing, I don't know, maybe we should say this out loud from poor Miss Deborah, but I can't wait to see a trainer and coach certification starting every month as well. Because you know what? We can't do this alone. That's right. We cannot That's right. do this alone. And, you know, we need trainers and coaches and who are going to step up. You know, e community centers, you know, Patrice, I told you when I started, we're going to be bringing Nehemiah to all the cities. We're going to be raising up Nehemiah centers. We're going to be raising up entrepreneurs who are really going to make a difference. You know, I went, I think it was last year, uh, we went to um, the Seven Mountains, um, the, the forum. In yeah. And, you know, one of the speakers had made a statement that really impacted me. And it's, it, it's had a significant impact on the prayer initiative as well. He said that there's not more people who are who are not Christian. They just speak louder. Wow. Oof. And 
and that impacted me. I, I'm sure he said it much more eloquently than I did, yeah. but that really impacted me because that's the problem. Mm. We need to speak up and speak louder. And, you know, yeah. the whole prayer and people, you know, have some fears of that, but that's part of the prayer initiative as well. And just, we've got to be just as loud for amen. Christ. Amen. Amen. I love it. I love it. So let me read a few scriptures that I've kind of pulled together around the importance of prayer. Um, uh, first Timothy chapter two, verse one and two says this, I urge then first of all, that petition, prayers, and inter intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and for all those in authority that we may live peacefully and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. So here the Lord is, is saying to us, hey, as we pray for all, especially for kings and all those in authority, wherever you live around the world, and we do so that we may live peaceful, and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Uh, and then also, um, uh, you also have in Jeremiah 29, 7, uh, where the scripture reads, also seek the peace and prosperity of the city for which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. And that's kind of what Wendy and Richard are doing here. They're, they're, they're praying for the peace and prosperity of the United States of America, because they understand if it prospers, then we too will prosper. And wherever you are around the world, whatever country you are in, seek the peace and prosperity of that country. Whether you think it's godly, whether you like the leader, doesn't like the leader, doesn't matter, but God instruct us because if that country prospers, you will prosper as well. If that country does not prosper, uh, you will be heard as well. And the last one I share is Second Chronicles seven fourteen, and we all familiar with this particular passage of scripture. We says that if my people, this is God talking to us, Wendy, uh, uh, Richard, and myself, and all of you believers who are out there watching and listening, say if, if we who are called by His name, Amen. those who confess to be Christians, who call on the name of Jesus Christ, if we first humble ourselves, right? Humble ourselves. If, if we first uh, stop being prideful. We first acknowledge our own human limitation. If we first acknowledge that though we might be the righteous, though we might be have repented, though we recognize that we too are flawed. If we humble ourselves, right? I'm, I'm thinking, Richard, about the guy in the scripture that that goes to uh, the, the that goes to prayer, and he says, "God, I'm not like the others. I'm not like the the yeah. tax." Like those uh, those tax collectors, I'm not like the the, the heathens, right? He praying with pride, you know. I'm God. I'm the good guy. I come to church. I tithe. I'm a biblical entrepreneur, you know. I'm I follow the seven steps, right? He said, "We got to humble ourselves, pray, seek His face, right?" What, what Wendy and Richard here said, calling us to pray, but we got to come with humility, seek His face, and turn from our wicked ways. So it's more than just us praying. Right. But we've got to repent. That's why this is this, this return event is about prayer and repentance. It's about a turning from our wicked ways. Guess what? I love biblical formulas. If we do it, he says, then I will hear from heaven. It's almost conditional. He's almost saying, if, if you don't humble yourself, if we don't pray, if you don't seek God's face, if you don't turn from your wicked way, in other words, you cannot be praying while still doing wickedness. That's right. God will not hear your prayers if you hear, hear, and he will hear from heaven. All oh, glory to God. He and forgive your sins and heal the land. I mean, essentially, Wendy, this is what you guys are trying to achieve, isn't it? That's right. That's right. It is. Well, Akani, thank you so much. Welcome, um, Wendy. Wani. One of your ye, our Lord Jesus, I mess your name up. Welcome, good to have you. So let's talk about it a little bit. So from those scriptures I've just shared, um, you know, which one of them kind of speaks to your heart as to why you're doing this? Let's start with you, Richard. Why this is important? Well, yeah, that, that passage in Chronicles is, is, you know, I just keep coming back to it because it, there's two 
two aspects of that uh, and in the, the repentance piece. One is the, the identification of the individual um, and that, you know, speaking directly to the, the Hebrews uh, at that point in time. So there's a, a national identity that the, the people need to, to confess the sins of the, the nation and identify with them. But there's also the individual uh, mm -hmm. repentance that needs to transpire because we all sin and we all fall short of the, you know, what God has called us to do. And so it's that piece of, of recognizing our, our individual sins as well as national sins. And we need to lay those before God, uh, be honest about them, so, and then God will bless uh, what we are trying to do. And so that, that is, uh, you know, a, a passage that I keep coming back to and, and recognizing that as we are move, trying to move forward and what God is calling us to do in this, this country, uh, it, it comes first as a, a need to humble ourselves. And uh, I think I, I mentioned in a, another meeting that sometimes we, we take a look and, and think we know what God wants and then we kind of beat each other up uh, because another brother or sister thinks something different. And it's almost like making an idol out of that idea that of, of what we think God wants to do uh, instead of in humility coming together and recognizing I may differ in my thoughts and understandings of uh, what what I think God wants to do compared to you, but let's sit down and talk about it, have a conversation, and then enter into prayer so that we can agree on what uh, you know we would like to see happen in our country. Wow, awesome. Wendy, which scripture, Amanda, that shared really speaks to what you're trying to do here? You know, um, if my people will humble themselves. You know, Patrice, for me, what that scripture does is we have to lead by example. I cannot tell people one thing and behave another. Mm. If I want people to see God's through my actions, then I must lead by example. And I believe that I must lead by starting to humble myself and before the Lord mm. and to take the knee first. To, to kneel before him, to repent. And, and the opportunity to come together and stand with my brothers and sisters in doing that, I feel strongly in, in providing that corporate prayer. This is what we're being led to. But Patrice, we can't just sit and complain and we can't hide behind a post or hide behind... Um, you know, just any of it. We just can't. As Christians, we must lead by example. And that means we lead with love. We do it in humility. We act out what God's called us to do. We, we create the businesses that he's called us to do. We walk the path that he has called before us, the purpose he's given us. So I feel so strongly about identity and destiny and helping people identify that so that they can do what God has called them to do. We, we have to lead by example, Patrice. Wow. Connie says, amen. She says, we must surrender and see God's mercy. Um, Miss Mercy, Miss Mercy, uh, Alpha Mercy says, the biblical formula that is talking about the, the, the scripture that that speaks it. let me read it again second chronicles seven fourteen. if my people right one who are called by his name two, will humble themselves three pray seek his face turn from the wicked ways he quotes he'll hear from heaven forgive our sins and my lord heal the land wendy but somebody may be listening washington says what is an entrepreneurship organization doing organizing prayer i mean how does this fit to, to your mission? Well, you know, our, our mission is to build kingdom businesses globally. And we do this with the best instructional book ever. 
which is the Bible. And therefore, that's what we lead with because that's what the Lord has said. And wow. that's why biblical entrepreneurs should always start with prayer. You know, Patrice, I did the whole entrepreneurship thing and I didn't do it with God. I thought I was way smarter. <laughs> I thought I knew what I was doing and I didn't do it with God and it was hard and, and it was disastrous. And now I do it with God. I seek his answers to what needs to be done. I start my morning. Okay, Lord, what do you need me to do? Not my to do list, not, not anything. What do you need me to do today, Lord? Wow. And as an entrepreneur, if we start with that, you can't go wrong. Amen. Amen. Again, uh, Wendy Clem, the uh, original director for North America. She also leads the community center in Orlando, Florida. She also leads the, the uh, uh, programs in the U.S. Uh, we also have Richard Zilke, our home office coach, as well as our chaplain, uh, talking about the importance of prayer, praying for our leader, praying for our nations. Wendy has a prayer initiative coming up that she wants to invite you to be part of. Uh, and prayer, I mean, prayer. And Wendy, Quickly, how do they, if they want to join you in this prayer initiative, what do they do? Give them some instruction again, please. So go to the ecommunity.com uh, website under events, and we're going to the, the uh, prayer global prayer initiative. You click on register, put in your information. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. We will send you an email with the Zoom link information. Join us on September 25th from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. in corporate prayer. And come and humble yourself with us. Amen. Looking forward to it. Wendy, thanks for having us and inviting us. But before we close, uh, I'm, don't leave yet. I want to pray for you guys. But before we do, I do want to give Richard and uh, Wendy an opportunity to give you some words of encouragement. Wendy, there are many entrepreneurs in the U.S. and around the world who are watching this, this podcast. Right now, they're facing COVID-19 economic trouble. In the U.S., they're facing social unrest. They're facing fires in the West Coast. They're facing uncertainty in our politics. Both parties promise that if one win, <laughs> nation, America is destroyed as we know it. So either way, America is over. And that's what really gives many people in your heart. What word of encouragement would you like to share with our people today? Wendy, let's start with you. You know, Patrice, God is in control. Not either party not the virus, not the fires, not anything that we do here on earth. The Lord is in, in control. But what we need to remember is we aren't doing any of this alone. The Lord is with us in everything we do. I love this, the vision of the footprints in the sand where sometimes there's a set standing beside us. There's two sets and sometimes there's only one. And when there's one, it's because the Lord is carrying us. We are never alone. Nehemiah Project is here to stand with the entrepreneurs. That's why we have prayer rooms at our e community centers. It's why we do prayer initiatives and we have our prayer because we are here to stand with you as well. But rest assured, you are never alone through any of it. I love a good word. Uh, Richard, what's, what's your word of encouragement? Well, um, one thing we didn't touch on is the question that I get. Um, quite often uh, when I talk about prayer for, for leaders is what am I supposed to pray? Um, my response to that is, first of all, pray for their salvation. Um, we need to be serious uh, in asking God to um, open their hearts so that they may receive uh, the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, secondly, uh, we pray for wisdom and that uh, God, uh, whether or not their, their hearts are open to them, God can still work in their lives and provide them the wisdom to uh, provide good leadership, uh, just leadership uh, for our countries or uh, any regions that uh, we're looking for, such as the state governor or city leaders and such. Um, and then I would just echo again what, what Wendy said, because it, it is something that we need to be reminded of all the time. It's that God is in control. Um, it, is, it is not by might. It's not by our own individual works uh, that things are going to turn around. Um, God is going to do it uh, in his own time, in his own ways. 
Wow. Well said. What a word of encouragement. Uh, before I, I share my closing words, here's what Connie said. Connie said, Dolly entrepreneurs prayerfully have access to unlimited supernatural wisdom and resources. Wow. Good work, Connie. Thanks so much for that. And here's what I'm going to say. Arfa Mercy, Arfa Mercy said, and I said the first name, inspired every new day of attending Nehemiah Facebook Live, challenging me to see God more, much more in entrepreneurship, nothing but prayer watching from kenya wow thank you so much my dear mm. good having you and may you guys be encouraged and inspired by this let me say this hopefully you've enjoyed this podcast if you have share this share with friends share with family share it on your own facebook on your own social media encourage others to get engaged in prayer and i invite you to join wendy and richard and myself to this prayer initiative coming up and of course, go to our website, uh, visit us at nehemiahecommunity.com, nehemiahecommunity.com. If you want to know more about how we can come alongside you and work with you uh, by providing with some training programs, by providing with coaching or access to financing to help grow your company, and also, of course, to be a part of our growing e-community, right? You want to be a member of a community that prays with you, that works with you as you seek to build the kingdom business that God has called you to do, we'll love to do that. Join us. With that said, don't forget tomorrow we'll be here, um, I think a little bit earlier tomorrow. I want to invite you tomorrow. I'm going to have Art Alley with us here on this oh, yeah. and he's going to talk about biblical stewardship. We're going to deal with our entrepreneurship series, right. job creation, and job creation through entrepreneurship. And Art will talk about how he's built this billion dollar mutual fund that is now. Uh, has created jobs and is financing the kingdom even during these difficult times. So join us tomorrow with Art Alley, the president and founder of the Timothy Plan. With that said, let me pray for you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord enable you to steward those talents that are under your care. And as you steward them, do it through prayer and actions. And as you do it, May you one day hear those wonderful words. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now God will make you ruler over much. God bless you. Wendy, Richard, thank you so much. God bless all of you. Thank you. you.